Hi everyone, welcome to another session of crime scene investigation. So we were discussing about crime scene reconstruction. We will see what are the basic principles for physical evidence and reconstruction. The foundation of crime scene reconstruction is established by the following basic principles used in the forensic examination of physical evidence. We all know that the basic concept of forensic science and is the Lockhart theory of uh, exchange. So Lockhart's principle of exchange means what? Every context leaves a trace. So from the crime scene we will get any way, any material that can link with the victim and suspect. Or, but the thing is that maybe some lack of the uh, transfer of these materials has limited value in the forensic laboratory examination. It still has significant importance in crime scene reconstruction. Maybe the uh, physical evidence which we are getting from the crime scene mm, may not uh, help in the laboratory because of its uh, quantity available but the thing is that it's very important while reconstructing a crime scene so there are four there are four uh, basic principles for crime scene reconstruction first one is recognition next one is identification then individualization and reconstruction for every uh, crime scene reconstruction for the constructing any crime scene what we want to uh, have first is recognition. First, we have to recognize the physical evidences or the materials which are helping uh, for the linking of a victim and um, suspect to the crime. We want to recognize all those items. So, any type of forensic analysis usually starts from recognition of potential evidence and separation of those items that have no evidentiary value. So, so many things, so many. Uh, materials will be present in the crime scene we have we have to recognize the correct physical evidence correct material with evidentiary value and you, you have to separate the other materials like um, from this crime scene you will get blood from the uh, hair or uh, fabric or any like uh, matchsticks so you want to collect the proper item of evidentiary value which can link the uh, victim suspect to the crime scene so that recognition is the main important part of uh, crime scene reconstruction unless the potential evidence can be recognized no further reconstruction can be carried out if we are not choosing if we are not recognizing the correct physical evidence we can't re uh, reconstruct the crime scene the examination of a microscopical scene and microscopical scene is different but the general approach remains the same if it is if the crime scene is microscopial or if it is microscopial uh, the search pattern will be different like we uh, you know about crime scene search pattern so uh, for every uh, crime scene depending upon the scene of crime uh, the search pattern will be different but the general approach of the searching is so remains same once potential physical evidence has been recognized, the investigator should always make every possible effort to properly document, collect and preserve the evidence. So, if uh, once we recognize the physical evidence which have more evidentiary value, then the investigating officer has to take the proper step for documenting the physical evidences and uh, what all things uh, that had uh, collected. Then. Uh, have to collect it properly and preserve it properly for further examinations. So, <clears throat> the investigator should always conduct an expert in the field before any alteration of the evidence is done. Before investigation uh, starts, the investigator, what he has to do is that he should call the uh, uh, forensic expert who is having more knowledge about the crime scene. For example, if an arson case happened, uh, the investigator, the first uh, police uh, police officer, what he has to do is that he should call the uh, call all the experts in that field, like electrical engineer, architect, uh, the person who built the building, 
and the uh, fire rescue team so all these all uh, professionals who are expert in this field like in arson case we he has to uh, the investigating officer has to call them first and then and start the investigation or if it is a sexual assault case the investigating officer should call the uh, doctor first for uh, before doing any alteration in the crime scene this part is very important because most conditional evidence and pattern evidence can be easily altered or destroyed like if uh, if at all it is a sexual sexual assault case uh, the doctor is not available and the uh, investigating officer is doing everything by himself uh, the uh, the evidences on the victim's body and nearby uh, places uh, maybe like uh, bite marks or any injuries or wound that can be uh, lost so uh, the thing is that uh, all the time before investigation starts the investigator should call an expert it's very important to emphasize that once such evidence has been altered the ability to conduct reconstruction was limited it will be limited so uh, if there is no evidentiary clues for clue for proper investigation uh, reconstruction uh, we can't do the proper reconstruction of the crime scene so uh, the, they have to Uh, secure all the uh, materials with evidentiary value in the crime scene so this is about recognition this is the first uh, step basic principle first basic principle of uh, reconstruction is recognition next one is identification identification is a comparison process which utilizes the class characteristics of a standard object or non substance to compare with the evidential item collected from the crime scene by comparing the physical properties morphological properties chemical properties and biological properties so what is an identification after recognition we have to identify the uh, object so identification is a comparison process this what it utilizes it utilizes the cl- class characteristics of a standard object or non substance to compare with the evidential item collected from the Uh, crime scene for example uh, if we are getting a tool mark uh, so it will be have tool mark will have cl- both class characteristic and uh, individual characteristic what is class characteristic class characteristics are the features produced by similar type of object that is if it is a tool mark a class characteristics is the uh, they are the features produced by similar types of tools and what is individual mark individual characteristics these are the characteristics which are specific to a object which can be imparted due to manufacturing defects or or developed by the wear and tear uh, while using um, by the person so these are difference between class this this is called uh, class characteristic and uh, individual characteristic so uh, if we obtain uh, a physical evidence from the uh, crime scene first uh, we have to identify it by comparing the class characteristic and individual characteristics uh, like physical properties of uh, like these are the um, class characteristics like physical properties and chemical properties biological properties all such th- kind of things they have to compare first and we we'll obtain class characteristic if we uh, if we get this is a particular uh, type of uh, material like for example uh, firearm this is this is a revolver like this is a revolver that is the class characteristic so this revolver this is a revolver and this bullet comes from a revolver that uh, that much we got so from that we can narrow down the investigation and uh, revolver means which type of revolver and from where it obtained who manufactured it like that we can narrow down the investigation so first we have to find out the identify the class characteristic then even the identification process of a person also starts with some logical process, uh, process of physical type of identification that uses properties such as height weight size race and hair and eye color etc to include or eliminate someone uh, this is also applicable in case case of an individual like a human being uh, for example if we get a type of uh, shoe print from a particular crime scene we can, by identifying the footprint we can find out that this person's height is this much 
or uh, this person uh, like the stature of this person we can assume the stature of a person if the uh, footprint is a uh, uh, small one like a child we can say that this is of this footprint is of a child if the footprint is very big like and in size we can say that this uh, person's height is about um, six feet and uh, he is a well statured person like that we can identify from uh, 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 from that scene if we if the high if we got some higher uh, scalp hair from the crime scene we can uh, identify or like race of the person and such kind of things so this is a this is class characteristic the more specific measurements can be carried out to individualize a person uh, before in 1990s uh, uh, like uh, what uh, a system called anthropometry uh, was developed by alphonse bertilli and anthropometry means measurement uh, identifying a person by his body measurements so uh, like that uh, the same procedure for physical evidence and also for identifying a person is the then we told about class characteristics and individual characteristics after identifying the whole character of that uh, the class character after that we have to identify the individual character character of that uh, evidence or even if it is a human being we have two more principles that we have we will discuss in the next session thank you